and welcome back for part five. Last time we talked a little bit about integer numbers and literals, which are basically constants in, in their own right since they never change in a program. And now we'll talk a little bit about integer mathematics. Now, inside integer mathematics, we have the standard operations. You've got addition, you've got subtraction, multiplication, division, and an oddball thing called modulus. And we'll talk about each one of these here shortly. So given that I have two numbers up there, let's give them some values. And if you remember, we called this the assignment operation. So we're going to assign number one the value of, oh, I don't know, 23. And we'll assign number two the value of 6, because I like 6. So we can do our, our, our mathematics either in a way such that we can store it inside another variable, or we can do it on the fly like this. There you go. So you can see now that if we run this code, it builds, it runs, and it prints out 23 plus 6 is 29. If we change the addition to subtraction and run it again, we get 17. Multiplication. And now the fun one, division. 6 goes into 23 three times? That doesn't make any sense, because 6 times 3 is 18, and that gives you 5 more. So this should be 3 point something if we think about it in terms of the math we're used to seeing. Well, integer mathematics basically says do the division and ignore truncate the rest of the math if it's not an integer number. So there's no three point anything, it's just three. So to make this number a three point something else, we'd have to do a couple of things. We could change the numbers to doubles or floats like we saw before, make them real numbers and you'd actually get that. And that's one way of solving the problem. But unfortunately, what if these numbers aren't supposed to be real? What if these are like counts of people? You don't have 3.6 people, so or 23.2 people that showed up to your party. So if you're trying to count like you know, numbers of people and number of pizza slices or something like that, you can't do it with, with, with a division. And that's where that funny modulus thing comes in. The modulus gives us what's known as the remainder, if we remember our elementary school mathematics. The remainder of a number is what's left over after you do the division. And we'll even put a little comment in here. So you can see kind of what's going on. And note the spacing around each of these insertion operators isn't really needed, but it looks pretty. It makes it easier to read. The compiler tends to just kind of ignore it and blip over it, but there we go. So the division of number one, 23, divided by number six, by number two, six, will give us three. The remainder will show us what's left over. So if we run this, there you go. The division amount is three, the remainder is five. This is integer mathematics. So this is the way you solve the problem of what happens when I do division with integer numbers, but I need to be more precise. This is one way of finding out what the remainder is. You can almost think of this like, like state machines and counting how many times you've gone around the circle and finding out where you are in the circle. There's all kinds of really neat, useful things for modulus. There's another way of solving this problem. We could actually say, hey, what if I want this to be an accurate number? What if I want this to be a, a, a fractional or a real number on the output? Well, we have this little thing that allows us to change what one of these things is without changing how it's stored. So in C++, we have this new thing. Well, not new, but it's been around a while. It's called static cast. Static cast allows us to change a type of number temporarily into another type of number. So this, this type of number one integer will now be cast statically at this point in time into a double. So it'll actually have a an integer component to it. Well, we we should really do it to both. 
So that way you, you know exactly what it is you've done in, in your code. Otherwise, you know, we'll talk about it in a second. There's this, this is a thing that'll do it for you, but anyway. So this static cast says take this integer number, temporarily convert it to a double, do whatever we're going to do here, and then the output will show up down here. If we run it, there you go, 3.83333. So this does temporarily convert things. It doesn't change the fact that it's an integer. It doesn't change anything, the values. It just makes it act like it's a real number. Now, the second run over here, if I take this out, if I take this part out and I run it again, you'll see that I get the same exact answer. That's because in C++, doubles are considered to be more precise. Things that have more precision are allowed to take things of lesser precision and temporarily, implicitly upconvert them to the new thing. So this new thing says, oh, okay, you wanted to double over here, but to do this division, I really need to double over here. So it implicitly converts it up and you get the mathematics happening automatically. Be careful with implicit conversion. Sometimes it can lead you down the rabbit hole. I typically would say if you're doing code and you want to make sure you know exactly what it's doing, be very explicit with what you want your code to do. If you need to make things faster at some point in time, maybe you can take some of this out, but this is a static cast. There's also something called a dynamic cast and a couple more things that are out there for you to play with. But for now, this is what you need to know about mathematics in integer type numbers. That shows you how to get all the math out. Now, we did this all on the fly in the output, so nothing changed. If you might need the value, say say we want to keep this value of the, of the, the static caching to a double because we might need it for something else. Well, you can do this by actually declaring another variable called result. Take the math out of your output statement. And I would go back to taking this into a static cast double thing again, just because I like precision. I don't like to have to guess what's gonna happen. I don't have to trust anything or anybody. Here we go. And there is your result and you should see Well, hopefully, we're running. Arr. Helps if I put the result here. There we go. And there we go, get the same result. So this is a way of saving something for later. Save later on down the code, you need to know what this was and do some other mathematics with it. Temporary things, do it inside the C out. Things you need for later, do it as a, as a variable of its own type and save the result. And with that, we've pretty much covered integer mathematics. Uh, double mathematics works the same way. You just don't have to do any conversion. It'll automatically give it to you as, as, as double output. If you have any questions, as always, see me in class. Coming up next, more math.